She's a clutterbug. She's a clean freak. They happen to be sisters. They swap lives for a day. What can they learn from each other? Whether you're super organized or super messy. What's the penalty they pay when it comes to their health? And is there middle ground for both? Plus, the item sitting in your purse that says a lot about your personality. Oh my goodness, that's pretty concave. What your lipstick is trying to tell you, coming up next. And what shape is that? We'll save lives today. You guys ready to get healthy? Yeah. My friends, it's all about getting organized with your stuff, the things that clutter up your life. If you can get it under control, you can get your life under control as well. Now we're gonna show you with a fun and outrageous social experiment how to do it. Because for the first time ever, I asked a self-proclaimed clutter bug and a clean freak to swap lives for a day to see what they can learn from each other. And uh, oh yeah, they, they happen to be sisters, which would make it a little more spicy. They will both learn something about balance, and so will you. Now today, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the secret to just clean enough to feel happier and less stressed. Plus, cool and unusual uses for everyday items in your house that will knock your socks off. I love these hacks. And finally, we've got a fitness star who is changing up the way we think with an unusual workout for your booty. So, we get started with how we can get you less stressed, whether you're a clutter bug or a clean freak. Now, I was so interested in this experiment because I've been noticing a viral movement to declutter going on right now. I'm seeing pictures like this. This closet is so clean, there's nothing on the hangers. Might be a little overkill. Folks are putting all their shoes away, and this is an impressive number of sneakers, by the way, but the notice they're all lined up exactly where they're supposed to be, but ideally would be in, the, in their shoe store. And this person's house is so clean, there's nothing left in it. They're literally you know, a half-filled warehouse with nothing else in the home. Where's the furniture? So, people are posting and bragging about their neatness obsessions online. And it's easy to assume that being super organized is better than being super messy. But psychologists say clutterphobia can be equally detrimental. So let's find out what happens when two very different moms swap lives. Meet sisters Michelle and Kim. One is a deep freak and one is a clutter bug. I do admit I'm a clutter bug. I am definitely a clean freak. I'm a mom of two kids and there's toys everywhere. I'm tripping over their toys all the time, trying to find their clothes. You can't find it. I know for me, clutter makes me feel crazy. I like a place for everything and it's worked great so far. My kitchen's a bit of a mess. I don't have a lot of counter space, so there's always stuff all over the counters. When I'm trying to cook, like I can't find certain things, so I'll go and rebuy them at the store. Then I'll find it again later. The dishes are usually piled up in the sink. The last thing I want to do after I make dinner is the dishes. When it comes to my kitchen, my island is like my sacred space that cannot have anything on it, except for my organized snack basket. If my husband comes home and drops his wallet on there, it drives me nuts. It goes here, like I've told you a million times. Thank you. When I try to do laundry, I trip over things. I can't get in there sometimes because I have so many boxes. Basically use that room as storage. I do keep my closets very organized. On a month to month basis, I go through each closet and organize things the way I like to see them. I have a walk-in closet and you can barely even walk in there. When I try to take stuff out of the closet, there's always pillows and blankets falling. I do find that being a clean freak does keep me calm. And sometimes it's almost therapy for me to organize something. My desk is usually a mess. There are times where I actually have found a bill that was late and I didn't pay it on time, so I get a late fee. I'm already stressed out being a mom. Just the thought of getting rid of all the clutter is overwhelming. So Michelle and Kimberly are here. So Kimberly, my dear, what was your reaction when you found out you're gonna have to swap places with your meticulous sister, Michelle? I was like, yay, I get to leave my mess for a few uh, hours. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And Michelle, how about you? What was your first reaction having to move into this sort of messy environment? Mm, I don't know, when I walked in, I was a little overwhelmed, a little uncomfortable. I feel like I have to put stuff away, um, so yeah. <laughs> your stomachs are acting up, you got the internal qualms. <laughs> Maybe not that bad, but so yeah. We have this dynamic in my family. Uh, my, my wife is okay, but she's not neat like her sister. Her mm -hmm. sister is so neat, so so 
much passionate about this that if you go visit with her, she'll vacuum under your feet while you're sitting on the sofa. <laughs> it's a true story. I thought it was strange, but I got used to it now. Is that what it's like being with your sister? Uh, well, this whole summer we were basically swimming at her house with all the kids, and anytime anyone went into the house to have to go to the bathroom, she would follow them around with the towel so her wood floors wouldn't get wet. No, now I see. <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. We're going to see how the experiment went. When the clutterbug Kimberly and her older sister turns out, the meticulous Michelle swap places. I wanted to know, how would a self-professed clean freak function in a cluttered environment? And how would a clutterbug respond to a highly organized space? So I had the sisters swap lives for the day to find out. There you go. Have fun. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Everything in place as usual. Oh my gosh, what happened here? <laughs> the minute I walked in, I felt very overwhelmed with all the stuff all over the place. My first instinct was like, how are we gonna get this cleaned up? Hey kids, you wanna help me clean this up? I heard your mom left me a list. Yeah, it's so weird. I think it's really important to have the kids help because then they have that life skill for their future and they're the ones really making most of the mess, so. <laughs> All right, James, we're supposed to clean up. I don't see much to put away. Lego. Oh, can you show me where they go? This is an amazing play area, completely organized. Get in here, oh my word. Seriously, dude? How does she get laundry done in here? Uh, exactly as it's supposed to be. This is clean. I guess I can fold this. Sometimes coming here is inspiring and intimidating at the same time. <laughs> this is crazy. She just needs a new system here. It looks pretty organized to me. You can't even see the countertop. I mean, it's crazy. There's clean dishes, dirty dishes, food that needs to be put away, papers. This is like really overwhelming for me. Like I need to start putting stuff away like now because I'm feeling like anxious and cluttered. I'm gonna make dinner. It's gonna be super easy since I have this list and a very organized kitchen. It's full yet organized. <laughs> Spending the day in a cluttered home really made me feel stressed out and a little out of control. It kind of stressed me out a little bit, thinking like I can't touch anything or can't mess anything up. I know sometimes I can be a little extreme with my cleanliness and that's not great either, but I know also having some neatness and organization helps my day run a little smoother too, so I have to kind of find that happy medium. I think there's a happy medium somewhere in between my mess and her cleanliness. <laughs> Very honest, very rough. Dr. Christine Carter, one of the country's top experts on happiness and balance, is here. So what are some surprising ways where being a clutterbug can affect your health? I want you all to pay attention because we're going to come back to the meticulous folks in a second. Yeah. Well, you know what, Michelle? You kept saying it over and over again. It makes us feel really overwhelmed. It triggers a state of chronic cognitive overload is what we call it. It makes it hard for us to stay organized, but also to make good decisions, to resist temptations, to control our emotions, creates a lot of stress and tension in us. And so. with that, you end up with sleep problems, yeah, because, weight gain, weight gain. You know, if your house is cluttered, your ability to just task out things gets cluttered too. Yeah, well, if you're having a hard time resisting temptations, it makes sense that you might have weight problems. Or if you're overwhelmed, it's hard to turn your brain off at night. So the sleep problems really start to make sense. But you know, on the flip side, <laughs> clutter can really stimulate creativity. So, and it can make a cluttered, a cluttered environment can make us more open to novel ideas, to interested in new things. So it's not all bad. Are you just patronizing us? That's no, I'm <laughs> not. How about the other side? What about meticulous folks? What's, what's the penalty they pay when it comes to their health? Well, when it tips over into perfectionism, you know, we know that perfectionism is its own particular form of unhappiness. Nothing is ever quite good enough, and that's not a very fun place to be. That can cause us anxiety as well. Depression can make us prone to exhaustion, chronic headaches. So I, we put them up behind there, fatigue and the like. So go ahead and each of you, look at your category. So Kimberly, you're behind yourselves on clutter bugs, and Michelle, you're right behind me. And identify which of those health issues you think are potentially influencing you. Which, how do you recognize those in yourself? 
Um, my number one would definitely be stress and anxiety. Um, sometimes I, I get myself worked up because things aren't perfect, especially like if, mm -hmm. if somebody's coming over, we're having a party, something like that. Like, that would be my number one thing. And Kimberly, you're still processing it? I know you're staring at <laughs> um, Kimberly going back and forth I to both get, lists. I do get very overwhelmed when I see the mess, and like, it, it makes me want to clean up, but sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, I don't even know where to begin because I'm just mm -hmm. overwhelmed with everything. You want some help? Sure. <laughs> You're not alone. I get asked this question all the time. And we're talking a lot about balance this year. So let's balance out lives on this regard. So when we come back, I'm going to give you an idea of how to balance yourself out if you're overly meticulous or you're overly clutterly because there is a middle ground. Some wonderful tips that we'll go over when we come back. How to be just clean enough for a happier home and a happier you. Next, find out what happened when these two sisters swapped homes. Did the experiment help to clean up their daily routine? Learn how you can feel in control and reduce your own stress. Three ways to find balance and be just clean enough. Next. You nervous? For the first time. I would give anything to know what's going on inside my body. A live exam in the studio. That's the heart pushing the yes, stomach back and that's forth. that's your heartbeat. The diagnosis she wasn't expecting. All new eyes. We're gonna help you figure this out. That's coming up tomorrow. go up perfect so how do you be just clean enough to feel in control and reduce anxiety now we just met a self-proclaimed clutter bug whose every drawer is overflowing and a clean freak who doesn't have a speck of dust in sight and for the first time ever we did a life swap experiment to see what they can learn from each other so Kimberly what was the most uh, alarming thing you experienced when you made this little switch into Michelle's life alarming thing uh, it was a little too neat for my taste um, <laughs> I felt like I couldn't really touch anything because if it was out of place that she would get mad. But um, I know that there's, my place is too messy. <laughs> would you have gotten mad at your sister if she messed up your house? No, only my husband and my kids. <laughs> for, letting her, for letting her do it. Right. So what did you learn from trading places, Michelle? Um, I learned that I could probably be a little easier on my family, like not yelling at my husband when he puts stuff on the island or not yelling at the kids when <laughs> stuff's out of place. Um, I could probably learn to be a little more relaxed. And Kimberly, honestly, what has changed for you since you got um, back to your old way of living? I'm trying to get my kids more involved with maybe putting yeah. their shoes away, their clothes away, and I'm going to try to do the dishes after dinner instead of leaving them till the morning <laughs> to pile up. It's good for a lot of reasons. Folks actually seem to lose weight if they're active after dinner, yeah. sort of lounging around. Yeah. And are the kids cooperating or not too yes. early to tell? <laughs> Right, come on a over. little bit. Listen, no one's perfect. That's the whole reason we did this little segment. You're both doing it okay. It's the coping style that we use that is more important. But Dr. Carter has three ways to help us all find balance. And this is a big deal, to be just clean enough. Because you don't actually want to be perfect, Michelle. Okay. So we're going to start with a daily <laughs> clutter detox. Does this make you nervous, Michelle, by the way, this door? Yeah. Look how cluttered. Okay. Don't you want to just fix it a little bit and move this like this? Yeah. <laughs> right. Dr. Carter, what, what, do you, what do you say here? So I say take 10 minutes every day to put things away. So putting everything back in its place. I actually recommend that you set a timer, right? So 10 minutes is totally achievable for you. Anybody has 10 minutes. It's also a great boundary setting technique for you, right? Yeah. So you can get a lot done in that 10 minutes. And by doing a little bit every single day can make a lot of progress. Bounce home. That's what we're talking about here. But you say yeah. we have to do it with order and disorder zone. So come on back. Uh, yes. this, is a, this is probably the biggest decision you have to make, yeah. is what are you gonna focus on? Come on back, everybody, yeah. so everyone can see this. So walk us through a way that we might actually, in our lives right now, whether in an apartment or a house or anything in between, figure out which zones are disordered and that's okay, and yep. which ones have to be orderly. Right, so the key thing here is that your whole house doesn't have to be perfect and that there are benefits to messiness. <laughs> so choosing a disorder zone in your house is gonna be the place where you wanna foster creativity. Messiness can really lead to creativity, to innovation, so it might be the place where your children play, it might be where you need to get your most creative work done. For me, it's my desk. I have a creative job, I'm a writer, so I let my desk. desk, this is my actual oh, desk. What a catastrophe, <laughs> look at that. I know, well Buster, our dog, doesn't seem to think so. Where's Buster? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even notice the dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but by the end of the day, this is what my actual desk looks like. I need to come up with lots of novel ideas in a given day, so I let that be. Mm -hmm. 
just to support your argument, we actually went back to the archives to find a picture of Albert Einstein's desk, which you put up there, as messy as yours. I'm in great company. Yes, another creative for you. Oh, Kimberly, maybe you're a creative genius. Yes, yes. Cool to be discovered. All right. yeah. And, then, and Mana, I, I know that you're not always messy, though. There are parts of your no. house you pay a lot of attention to. No, Mo the rest of the house is pretty cleaned up. My kitchen is a definite order zone. Everything has a place for it. I, I definitely recommend that we pick the kitchen as our primary order zone because research does show that we make healthier food choices mm -hmm. in an ordered environment. And Michelle, which room would be your disorder room? The room that you're just okay with it not being neat? For me and my yeah. house? Um, I mean, the playroom, I let go for like maybe a week and then <laughs> I'll make them. Your work. playroom Actually, looked pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. It was more, it, it's more like, yeah, maybe one, like on Wednesday I make them clean and on Saturday I make Let them. me ask you again, which room would you be comfortable letting Leaving. fall apart, not be so uh, neat? Your, your office too, your desk. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> Um, we have some work to do on <laughs> Michelle here. You think about, I'm gonna come back to you. I wanna, that's a, that's, that's oh a big deal. If you're used to being really neat, it's hard to let go of all that. But that's actually your biggest decision. Yeah. It's actually much easier to be perfect on the surface, but it destroys you inside sometimes. <laughs> so we think about it. Meanwhile, step number three is to outsmart your recurring clutter, because we all have this. We all yeah. have places where it just is overwhelming all the time. Mm -hmm. What do you do there? So this is really about prevention. So noticing the places in your house that start to build up and for you cause anxiety because mm -hmm. you haven't cleaned them already and for you cause that feeling of overwhelm, mm -hmm. right? So mail is a big one. Paper yes. clutter is a really big one. So when you come in preventing this sort of buildup by having a paper shredder or your recycling right there, having a place for everything. So I want these keys to always go right here, <laughs> See, that's right? And happening. to have um, and to have a place so that instead of putting it down in a big pile and letting the cu the clutter build up, going ahead and shredding it right right away. Here's an unopened bill. You can shred that. <laughs> <to start with. laughs> no, but, you know, I, you know, I must say, having a, a trash nearby makes a lot of sense. But why is a shredder important? Everyone seems to say that. Yeah, I know, a lot of clutter experts just to get deal with it one time. So if it's something that you know that by the end of the week you're gonna need to shred, going ahead and shredding it right away before it goes, so you're not moving it several times. There's several cleanup processes that need to happen that way, just doing it once. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, you start shredding. Michelle, your feet are in the fire now. What room are you gonna let grow a little bit of organic <laughs> debris in there? Well, can I make a commitment to let it be the playroom? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you really have to let it go then. I, I can, because I don't see it all the I time. About that. <laughs> it's a real sacrifice. All right, start shredding, you guys. Start shredding. We've okay, got okay. simple okay. solutions throughout the show. Really? Here's a, yeah, please, it's not even yours. I know, but it's Here's like one from a Pinterest loving mom. Take a look. Get in there, put your back into it. <laughs> easy way to organize makeup. Now my makeup causes a lot of clutter in my bathroom especially, so what I've gotten is a through in binder and I have simply organized my makeup into these little pencil cases that I got from the office supply store. So I've used some simple themes like lips, eyes, pencils, and even brushes. This works really well because I can see everything in the case, right? And then I simply snap it out and I can take the bag on the road for travel. Next, there's an item in your purse that says a lot about your personality. It's like a horoscope to me. I'm fascinated by this. What the shape of your lipstick is trying to tell you. Are you ready to find out what this says about your personality, Suzanne? Yes. You don't learn this in medical school, by the way. Coming up next. Something in all of your purses right now that can tell you a lot about who you really are. It is your lipstick. It may seem like it's just makeup, but in today's conversation, a beauty company's new study that went viral says the shape of your lipstick is a window into your personality. So you all have your lipsticks? Oh, yeah. Women do anyway. Open it up a little. I want to see the tip. I got to see the top of the lipstick. That's what this is all about. There we are. We got a bunch of them. So it's like a horoscope to me. I'm fascinated by this stuff. Let's get to the first shape. It's the concave shape. Whose lipstick looks like that? See how it's a little bent in like that? We have a couple. Oh, how are you? What's your name? Suzanne. Yeah, I see your lipstick, Suzanne? Sure. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you, you all see that? That's pretty <laughs> concave. Right. Are you ready to find out what this says about your personality, Suzanne? Yes. 
I wrote the notes down here. You don't learn this in medical school, by the way. It means you're a creative, energetic, and a risk taker that always gets noticed. That passion that you have as you make that dent in that lipstick, because you, you know it's firm, solid pressure, uh, actually uh, reflected by that concave shape, is, defines who you are. So what are you passionate about? Life, life. everything. People yes. in your life? People, my children, my family, friends, everyone. Good for you. Well, I like the color too. Thank you. All right, <laughs> ready to move on. Who else wants to show me the lipstick? Let's put them up. Lipstick people up. Get in. Well, that's another concave one. A lot of passion for you, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it looks more like I'm a crazy person, actually. Yeah. That's a <laughs> crazy amount of passion. Yeah. Right. Other, other, other thoughts? Oh, what's this one? I have no idea what's it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is this? What's your name? Uh, I'm Yulia. And what shape is that? Uh, it looks messy. <laughs> Let me compare these two. Both of these look concave. You, you need new lipstick. I need new lipstick. Okay. Yeah, I've been using it a lot. <laughs> see, this is an interesting. You know, th this is, uh, uh, it's, it's so, so, so curved. It actually has a center point to it. You notice that? Yes. You worked your way around the edge. <laughs> yes. Seriously. I don't know how many people have that shape. Maybe you should pick that. See that, pick, that little diagram up there? Now, these folks are, are truth seekers. They're meticulous. They're enthusiastic as well as being passionate. What are you meticulous about? I just think I'm a reliable, responsible person, meticulous. I like to keep things in order. Yeah, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. So when that tip cracks off, that center point, what are you going to do? Panic? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. All right. I got one more. This is a shape that I actually have myself that I want to share with you guys. And this, ta-da, is actually one of my producer's lipsticks. She doesn't know I have it. It was borrowed by one of her colleagues. Uh, I know she's going to be mad when she sees this. She may recognize it. Sasha, where are you, Sasha? Uh, right here. You notice something is missing? <laughs> notice the lipstick, by the way, she's wearing. I was looking for my lipstick. Yes, it does happen sometimes. So I'm gonna read to you, Sasha, pay attention here. This is what your lipstick says about you. It says that you are self-confident, well-balanced, and have a love for detail that you cannot be controlled. This is, this is called the steep angle. Notice that's like Everest over there, really steep. And from what I've seen, lipstick is normally like this, normally gets worn down, but you can't be worn down. You know, you can't be controlled upward and onward for you. What do you think? Is that That's good description? why I work here. That's why you work here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sasha. Well stated. I'll give this back after the break. Up next, I'm revealing the list of the most unusual uses for items in your kitchen. You're gonna love this. Stay here. Next, I got some of the best hidden sources for hacks right in your cupboard. Save time and money with everyday things from your own kitchen. Culinary items with some surprising new uses. Oh my goodness, That's look at that. It's a wonderful idea. Next. You nervous? For the first time, we're gonna help you figure this out. A live exam in the studio. Heart pushing the yes, stomach back and forth. That's her heartbeat. The diagnosis she wasn't expecting. All new eyes. That's coming up tomorrow. I'm obsessed with unusual uses for everyday things. So you guys, I'm always Googling and emailing them to my producers. So I found one of the best sources for hacks in your own kitchen. And here with a list of unusual uses for culinary items is Brooke Van Poppelen of Hack My Life on True TV. <laughs> now, like everybody else in the audience, she agreed to bring her lipstick with her. So may I see your lipstick? Yes, you may. And there you, want, you, go. you want an honest yep. appraisal? Honest appraisal? Oh my what goodness. What does that mean? See how flat that is? Yep. You know what that means? High morals. That's right, About everybody. Have dependable, quick-witted, quick-minded, love a challenge. I do. Does that sound accurate to you? Uh, yeah, I think this segment is gonna be challenging and rewarding all How, at how once. about the high morals part? Was that I, accurate? Absolutely, I was raised by two good people. Okay, are they here? <laughs> They might be. Yeah, they might be. We'll find that in a moment. All right. So I know you're just obsessed as I am about all kinds of hacks. Yes. So what makes a good hack? What defines it for you? Absolutely. Uh, a good hack is something that saves time and money. Um, one of my favorites is a double use for something you already have in your home. Doesn't cost you anymore. Doesn't cost you Coming anymore. Coming over here. Okay. These are a list of some of the unusual items with unusual uses. So slices of bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like we, we're not supposed to eat those anymore. So let's find a different use. What? A rolling pin? Rolling pin, yes. You know, not just for angry housewives to beat their husbands over the head with, yeah. Right. What else do you have? <laughs> well, to-go condiment packets, it might look like you don't have your life together. So, you know, a lot of takeout, but we've got another use for that. Okay, finally, 
paper towel holders. I know. You know, I, my parents actually didn't have one. I like got after them. They kept shoving it in a drawer underneath every time. I was like, oh my God, you need a paper towel holder. And now there's another use for it. Parents. Oh. Parents. They're the they're worst. So now incorrigible. They're All right. You're going to go through these one by one. We're going to start with a slice of bread. Now you are you. This has many potential uses. Yes. And I, what, what's this glass? Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. Ooh. You're so very clumsy, Dr. Oz. No. Turns out you can use a piece of bread to pick up broken glass. Oh, what bread. a coincidence. What a <laughs> coincidence that, that was wonderful theatrics were you full that was so good was that, that done, was done? So good. did i look klutzy <laughs> for a surgeon all right so how do you do this all right so i mean first of all you know we all know to be very careful i'm the kind of person who i'm not afraid to pick up some of the bigger pieces so i'm going to move these out of the way but and you know what i just stepped on some broken glass i, I knock over wine glasses oh. a lot usually after i've had a few et cetera, et cetera. What about that high-minded stuff we talked about earlier yeah exactly <laughs> okay yeah all right well high morals let's get back on the high road so all these pesky little tiny shards that you can end up stepping on you can use a piece of bread to gently mop up and pick up it's very spongy does it really and work you can get yeah you can get in there and it gives you a protective layer so that your hand. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Either. Yep. You see the pieces of, of, of glass there? Right. It's a wonderful idea. Just go make a sandwich. No, 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 no sandwiches. sandwiches after <laughs> that. No, no, no. All right. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. And again, we, it's your rules. We already have it in the house. It's available yes. if you're still buying bread. All right. Rolling pin. What's this for? Um, so if you've got a rolling pin at home, great. You can use it for cookies, whatever you want. But if you've also got a tense back, shoulders, etc., this is a great tool for rolling out. Tight muscles, may, may I? Yeah, may I like do the it. honors? Oh, oh, I wanted to do good. this. Oh, Whoa. Oh. Yeah? But okay. There's someone else, okay. someone else I know after hearing all this conversation about yeah. your lipstick who probably is very tense. Yes, Special probably, because this was on her bucket list, not mine. It was? roll you out, so. Let's go hit your mom. We have mom <laughs> over here. All right. Yes, Yay. Come on over, mom. Hi, mom. Was it really on your bucket list? <laughs> bucket list was looking at a nice massage. I know. See, I, my mom's uh, been a nurse for 35 years. She takes care of a lot of other people. Well, God bless you. So, yeah. Here. Thank you. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, you hold her out. Get out of right. my way. Yeah. I'm trying to help a nurse here. I'm trying to help a nurse, a real healer. Okay. Awesome. Is that good? She's been picking on you, mom. She has been. You, ra you raised a good daughter. You should be very proud of her. It's a gift from the show. It's the, literally the least we could do. All right. Okay. All right. It's so, a gift. Next on the list are yes. condiment packets. Yes. I, again, I must say, these are usually things that I toss. Never thought right. about them. But mm -hmm. you have a unique use, and you actually put them in the freezer. Yeah, that is your first step, is to take those ketchup and soy sauce packets, pop them in the freezer, let them get nice and frosty. First of all, if you wake up and have puffy eyes, these are nice and eyeball size, so you could put them uh, directly on. And Oh my goodness. Cool off. There you go. It's cold. Oh, I mean, it's under your eyes, not on your eyes. eyes. On. I don't know. Yes. I always look perfect when I wake up. That's right. Does Just it kidding. does it really work? It it does help in a pinch. Another better use for this though is if you I I'm not looking away with that. I I'm always suspect of these beauty tips. So I asked a member of the audience, Marie, oh, to okay. join us. Marie, come on in. Okay. Hi. Now Marie road tested this at home. First of all, did you like the hack? Did it make sense to you? Yes, it did make sense. At first, I was like, hmm, who would think of something like that? Because I wouldn't, but I had a whole drawer full of all these condiments. I said, you know what? Let me try it. So I put hot sauce. I mean, it's not recommended. <laughs> but uh, I put the hot sauce packets in the freezer. It took about 15 minutes to freeze. And then I laid down, put them under my eyes for about five minutes. And so here's the before. You, here's the before. There's the before picture. And there's the <gasps> after. This after five minutes? Yes. That's quick. That looks fantastic. That's great. Now I interrupted you. You were going to say that no. you use it for kids also? Yeah, you know, another great use for this, aside from our beauty regimen, et cetera, is if you've got children and say they, you know, have a little scrape, a sprained wrist, ankle, finger, this is kid sized. You can put it on the affected area because the giant normal sized ice packs, it's too much. It's yeah. too cold for them. And this is child sized. Perfect. These are yeah. wonderful. Mom, since you're a nurse here, these are for. There we go, more. <laughs> for, for grandchildren, for grandchildren. All right. All right, All right great. Now, this last one you're going to like, and you, can, you don't have to even test this. We're going to just let you be part of this. This is uh, an idea that I think is pretty unique. We'll help a lot of folks with that cluttering issue we were talking about earlier paper towel holders. Oh my gosh, yes. This is great for decluttering. I mean, first of all, it's great for the intended purpose, but if you've got an extra one lying around, let's take this off here and move it aside. It's great Put for. Put it here. 
Yeah, in there, perfect. It's great for organizing belts, you know, bigger uh, accessories you have in your collection, and you can just do something different than what I do at home, which is put them on a nail or a hanger, which looks awful. And now you've got nice and organized, if you want to finish that, oh, wow. knock yourself out. You've got a great way to keep your jewelry organized, which you guys were talking earlier, like when you get a nice visual. Yeah. It's artistic, I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Thank you very You're much. Very Wonderful welcome. advice, thank you. Thank thank you so Listen, much. my daughter's gonna love this, yours will too. Share it with everyone you know, thanks to you. And but your show's called Hack My Life? Hack My Life. On True TV, check it out, it's very well done. DrRoz.com will have a bunch of these hacks as well. Up next, a cross-country hackathon using wax paper. I'm gonna share my favorite unusual use for it when we come back. <laughs> Coming up next, clever new uses for wax paper. Find out what happens when I pass a roll over to our viewers around the country. See the surprising ideas they come up with. Plus, I'm sharing my own favorite new use for it. Next. Such a blast finding unusual uses for foil. By the way, that went viral, which I really like because people were using it and helping them make their lives better, made me happy. But I thought I'd experiment with foil's cousin. You know who foil's cousin is? So smart, wax paper. I wanted to see the clever ways you could use wax paper. So I sent a roll of it across the country and asked you to pass it along in your favorite ways to rock this roll. I'm Tiffany Rose from New York. I use wax paper to stop microwave splatter. Messy microwaves are the worst. Put a sheet of wax paper over your food to stop the splatter. Hi, Dr. Oz, I'm Courtney from Pennsylvania, and I use wax paper to clean a can opener. All you have to do is run the paper through the gears. I'm Amanda from Pennsylvania, and I use wax paper to keep wooden salad bowls in great shape. After washing and drying the bowls, reel them up by rubbing the bowl with wax paper. Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm Donna from Rhode Island. I use wax paper to recork a wine bottle. Hi, I'm Michelle Vaughn from Illinois, and I use wax paper to rescue a wet book. Just place pieces of wax paper between the damaged pages and close the book. The wax paper wicks away the moisture and prevents wrinkling. Well, thank you very much. So I use wax paper for a no mess spice refill. My family loves to cook with herbs, so we're always refilling it. Brooke Van Poppelen from Hack My Life wouldn't leave. <laughs> no, sorry. But she has a hack to give you as well. So let's, let's do mine first, then we can do yours. Great. All right, so you have to help me. Take all wax right. paper, all right? Great. Are you a good cutter? Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. about this size? About, yeah, about, about, right. cut it the right size. Do we want two of them, one for you, yes. one for me? I, right. I pre-cut mine because I'm prepared. Surgeons are always prepared. So what you do with the wax paper, oh, oh. There we go. Okay. so you take the wax paper and you're gonna funnel it so you're gonna wrap it like this, gently, mm. gently. And the nice thing about wax paper is that nothing sticks to it. So you can create oh, a funnel yeah. and put spices in there. So you can put flowers in there or anything else you wanna do, but there it is, let it expand a little bit. That's great. Right. Then take your spices. We use this because in Oz household we got spices all the time and we have bigger jars that have them. So you can pour it into a nice little dainty jar like this. See, mm. if you spill a little bit, no one cares in my household. Then you let go like that. You see them all come out and you're done. I'm faster right. than you are by the way. More faster than me. Now, uh, salt, pepper, everything works. No mess, no waste. You're very neat, by the way. Okay, what's your hack? Top, top that hack. All right, this hack. Okay, with your wax paper, do you ever get a zipper stuck on your jacket, a dress, on your jeans? On all kinds of things, yes. On all sorts of things. Yes. So you can take a piece of wax it paper. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you can take a piece of wax paper and you can actually wax the teeth or the track on the zipper and it oh. holds it up so it'll come loose and start sliding back up and down again. That's a, a, I don't have any zippers though. No zippers, but I like the idea. That's a very good hack. Yeah. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Right, up next, new and unusual ways to get a better booty. You'll want to see this. <laughs> next, want the perfect butt like your favorite celebrities? I'd like to channel my Beyonce. We're going to show you how to get one today. 
We have uh, helped sculpt both Kim Kardashian and J-Lo's booty. You want it nice and high stuff, right? That's, this will get it high. Next. You nervous? For the first time, we're going to help you figure this out. A live exam in the studio. Heart pushing the yes, stomach back and that's forth. That's her heartbeat. The diagnosis she wasn't expecting. All new eyes. That's coming up tomorrow. Maximus. There are more than 50 different terms to refer to it. You all know butt, right? You know booty, yes. Tush, sort of obvious ones. And there's some other ones that are gaining popularity, like junk in the trunk, right? <laughs> so whatever you call it, doesn't matter. We're gonna work it out today in a new and unusual way. Joining me is Joey Gonzalez from the fitness craze, Barry's Boot Camp, which I did, I did this summer for the first time. So what's your pet name for the, the booty area? So I'm actually gonna make it 51 because I have my own name. And right. I call it the back face. The back face? The back face Why? because it's the first thing that people see when you turn around. And oh it also goodness. is just staring right at you, right, oh when you gosh. turn around. <laughs> Can't ignore it, it's right there. Why is the back face your favorite part of the body to work out? Uh, you can work it out in so many different ways. You can do dynamic exercises, you can do compound strength exercises, and you can do more targeted exercises, which is what I've planned for today. So I know you can probably teach me, because I'll follow you meticulously, but there are a few ladies who jumped, literally leaped at the opportunity to work with you. Oh, She's awesome. come on out. They're the tough ones, they're tough customers. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and say hi to them. Lydia, how are you? I'm great, how are you? So in Turkish, uh, the word for the backside is popo. Hmm. What's your favorite word? Well, since I have six-year-old twins and I'm Puerto Rican, I refer to my non-existent behind as my wannabe J-Lo booty. The J-Lo. The wannabe. Wanna wanna be. Good. We'll get there, we'll get there. Can Open we so. What makes the booty special for you? Well, for me, it's something of high, tight, nothing hanging down here near my knees. Nice and big, but, but, but up high. Yeah, <laughs> nice and high. All right, and finally, <laughs> Linnell, describe if you don't mind, what would it look like for you to work it out so it looks perfect? Well, I would like to channel my Beyonce behind and Kim Kardashian, but I like it nice and tight and up. But this, squats. This is a very aspirational. <laughs> very aspirational. All right. So going to help us get to our ideal downside. So what's unusual about your workout? What do you got for us? So today I planned something that you can basically do at home. Anybody, any viewer can do with us. Uh, I'm just going to ask to bring something like a purse or a weighted item close to you so that we can add it if it's too easy. All right. uh, and we're going to do it on the floor in your living room while you're watching TV or at the office on the floor as well. We're going to get down into all fours. Do we get any music or anything or just got to do it? Let's do it. Let's it. do some. I can. There oh, we there we are. There we go. They don't have By to the way, sing. Barry's Boot Camp, we have uh, helped sculpt both Kim Kardashian and J-Lo's booty. Oh my so goodness. This is some good stuff. We have, a, right. we have a whole day on Tuesday called Butt Day. So. Oh God. <laughs> you start off right here. Keep your right knee bent. It's a quadruped hip circle. Bring it all the way up. Turn it all the way out and bring it back down. And you can feel you're working every part of that glute. And there's some nice movement in your hip here as well. All the way up. Camille, you enjoying this? Out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another good thing to do is add resistance bands. Uh, at Berries, we have what's called booty bands, and they strap around your ankles, and it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Booty bands. Booty bands. Oh, my goodness. I bet they sell well. All right, yeah. next up. And by the way, you know, I, this reminds me when I tried off a chorus line. Uh -huh. These exercises. <laughs> I tell you, it really helps. All right, second move. Okay, you're going to lie on your side all the way down, and you can support your neck with your hand here. Your knees are touching and bend your legs about 45 degrees. This is called the side clam. You can lift your knee all the way up and back down. And you're gonna feel, do you ladies feel that top part of your glute? Yes. Oh yeah. Squeezing. Yes. You want it nice and high stuff, right? That's, this will get it high. <laughs> exactly, and this is one of those exercises too that you can add a prop if you want. You can put that purse on top of that knee. Where's my purse? And add a little bit of weight. I have this. Oh, I, have this. Yeah. So I brought something special for you. This? Are you, uh, are you kidding me? I know, I know you like a challenge, so. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, that seems God. fair. It's your show. Gosh. Uh, you guys have weights in your bags, too? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, yes. we do. Oh, my yes. goodness. And so these are targeting all different areas of the glutes. And, and how many do you again? Uh, you should do about 20 of them on each side. On each side, okay. Yeah. And finally. And the final one, this is my favorite glute exercise. That sounds bad. You're just, you're just <laughs> gonna get down. This part you'll like, just lie down. Feet are planted on the floor, about shoulder distance apart. Hands grip the 
floor right by. Oh your good, side. I don't need these weights. Again, you're gonna place your 20 pounder on your lap right here. Oh, and God. you ladies are gonna place you're your kidding purse me. right here. Right here? Oh, <laughs> and it seems really simple, but this is really the best glute exercise out there. You're gonna start by igniting in those hamstrings and lifting that pelvis up. And when you get to the very top, just squeeze those glutes together. And that's where all the work is done. So really the more important thing here isn't how many you do, but when you get to the top, spend some time up there just squeezing them together. <laughs> oh. Squeeze, pulse, pulse, and then release. You should stay is up it, for this, as long as you possibly can. It's a daytime can. show, what? so. <laughs> I'm doing my best, guys. Right. You keep going over there, it's not that funny. All right. We'll be right back. Oh, God. God. Right. You nervous? For the first time, we're gonna help you figure this out. A live exam in the studio. Heart pushing the yes. stomach back and That's forth. That's her heartbeat. The diagnosis she wasn't expecting. All new eyes. That's coming up tomorrow. a new health law that could affect glitter in your town. New York City's Board of Health is tackling sodium as a salt warning law unanimously approved and will go into effect today. Now, with the new salt warning law, chains will need to place this logo next to any menu item that exceeds the daily amount, which is a teaspoon of salt a day. Now, we did our research and found that sometimes these popular dishes from your favorite fast food chains, for example, the fried chicken meal, a burrito, or chicken parmesan, they far exceed the daily amount of one teaspoon of salt. That's what you're allowed to have. Roughly that much salt. That's what you're allowed to have. That means that when you see this logo next to those items, which you'll see, right, you'll know that is too much for you. Now this affects everyone. For those of you who don't live in New York City, if you eat any of these items that we found, that means you've hit the recommended daily salt intake with just one meal. Now here's why we're concerned. According to a Harvard study, one in 10 deaths, think about that, one in 10 deaths is linked to excessive salt. Our average sodium intake is just too high. That causes high blood pressure, which is of course the leading cause of death in this country because it leads to heart disease. So that's what we should be ingesting in one year. This little teaspoon, I'm sorry, in one day, this teaspoon, if I add it all up, this is the amount that you should be ingesting in an entire year. However, the average American doesn't consume this much. They consume, watch carefully, 50% more than you're allowed. So guess what happens to happening? You overdo it. We all have been here. The purpose of my show is for us to be a field guide to sift through information. I know it seems complex, but information is power. And it's important when eating food prepared by somebody else to know this, how much uh, sugar and especially salt what we're talking about today is stuck into our foods so you know the pitfalls. I hope this encourages food companies, fast food companies in particular, to reconsider their salt content because I know it's a complex path towards health, but we can do it. And I want you to hear this news and start to apply it to your own lives and share your thoughts on my Facebook and Twitter posts with hashtag salt warning. And we'll share it with others as well. Remember, happy and healthy, it starts at home.